Hello everybody and a good day to you all. And this, today I'm doing another vlog and this is a, a, um, a story I'm talking about um, the time I was bullied. Now, I lived a very sheltered life. I didn't know that at first until I started going to public school because um, all this, I, I grew up in the church. My father's a preacher, my mother was the, is the, on the mother's board of the church, and that's all I, that's all I pretty much knew. And the only people I pretty much hung around, either, either I was in church or my family. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And even the schools I went to were church, were actually churches slash schools, from preschool and up. And my mom taught at two of the schools I was at, so not only was I... Um, um, I, I made nice friends in school, but I also like friends with the teachers because my mom was friends with the teachers. And and, and I went I, another school. I went to sanctuary. I was even friends with the principal because my 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 my, 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 my mom was friends with her, and the the principal liked me, and she kind of treated me like I was her nephew. So it, it was like it was like kind of a family type of vibe. So so this is my first time at public school by myself. My mom wasn't a teacher there. I it wasn't in my neighborhood, so I didn't know I didn't know the kids. And um, so, because a lot of the kids already knew each other because they went to school together from other schools. They grew up together because they were in, in the same neighborhood. And so they already had their little friends and bonds already. And I was scared. This is the first time by myself. I was a little nervous. And I thought that I might get picked on or out or out in some type of way. Because I, I wasn't like everybody else. Because I, I never cursed. I still don't curse now. And I didn't quite dress like everybody because I, I, my pants never sagged. Um, my pants, my even my jeans had creases, had, or creases had creases in it. Even when I was when I wearing regular clothes, it looked like I was going to church. So it's like, it, 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 so I kind of stood out, not 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 trying to, but I just did. And some people kind of pointed it out a little bit, but they, they never really teased me for it or made fun of me. It just it is what it was. So my first year at um, middle school, public school by myself, actually went pretty good, and, I, and all the fears I had went away. Everything was fantastic, okay. And then the next semester, things went down a darker path. Now, I, I was I was I was short, and I was very skinny, and um, and so, but the, I, I had a weird thing on my body, like um, I was very veiny, for reasons I don't know, very thick veins. Like I had I had a very skinny body, but I had bodybuilder veins. It made no sense, but it is what it was. So I never thought nothing of it. Nobody even mentioned it to me before. So I, I just thought, well, that's how my body is. And then one day, now before I get into it, before I say, go any further, I'm gonna let you know right now. I'm gonna be using words that are very inappropriate, and I do not want to offend anybody. But this is what happened to me, and this is what was called to me. And I apologize to anyone who is offended by this. I do not want to hurt you at all. This is not a, this is not an attack on anyone. This is just something that happened to me. So, ever see one of those kids in school that looks way that matures way maybe faster than everybody else? He like he, like, he was bigger than everybody. He looked like a grown man. He even had facial hair, which was like mind-boggling to all the boys in the school in the, in the school because I looked like I was still in kindergarten, so it was, like this, it was just like a weird dynamic. He looked like a grown man. He towered above everybody, and so it was so. And so he saw me as the target. I don't know what made him draw, draw to me or not. I don't know what, what caused it. I never did nothing to this boy. I never talked to him. I had my friends. He had his little group. I don't know who it was, but we never really associated. Only time, only time he was together the most was in the homeroom because we all had to go there. And so one day it was hot. I was wearing a short sleeve shirt, and um, and my veins were popping out like like I usually do. And he said something that changed changed how my, my school experience was ever since. He said, "Hey, you look like one of those crackhead faggots that be under the bridge." And then everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. And I was like embarrassed, but I didn't want to let him know that it got to me. So I just like laughed it all. I said, "Ha, huh, that's nice." And then, but but the thing is, though, since everybody laughed, he went he went in even harder, and it, and it transitioned from I look like one of those crackheads, and then until I am that. And then the next day, he went at it again, 
and, and, and the next day, again, it just kept, he just kept going, calling me the F word. He kept calling me, like, telling me what I'm doing. And then he's telling people that I'm giving him blowjobs under the bridge. I mean, it just got worse and worse and worse every single day. And the, th the thing is, though, you have a lot of the same classes with a lot of the same people all the time. You see them all the time. So this is every day. From Monday to Friday, I'm getting this. And I didn't tell nobody, which is, was bad. And I'm saying this right now. If you are in, if you're being bullied in school and somebody's picking on you, please tell somebody. Tell, tell, your, tell your parents. Tell your teachers. Tell a counselor. Tell somebody because there are people there who are willing to help you. But they can't help you if they don't know. They don't know. They, they cannot help you. And so I kept it to myself. Because, because the thing is, though, I was never scared of him. It was, I was more like to, since I was raised in the church and I was taught to behave in school, all I kept thinking about, I don't want to disappoint my parents by getting into a fight and getting into trouble. So all I got to do is ignore them. If I ignore them, he, it, it, he'll have to get bored of me and then he'll go away. Because the, because the thing is, though, plus, he, he never touched me. He just, he just, it, was, it was a lot of verbal abuse every day. And I just kept it to myself. I tried to laugh it off my friends like it was no big deal but it was messing me up on the inside and it got to the point that i was starting to have dreams about him and and, and, a, and it was very bad very bad like, like, in my dreams he would come to me say what he said and then i'll take out a bat and i'll beat him in the face that was my dream it was like, it was like a recurring dream all the time it happened and it happened all the time it's just that when i was feeling the worst that's when it like it, 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 i had that dream so every day he was to do. He would do this. And he even had a friend who started to pick on me too, but he he stopped. He he stopped. He only did it like once. He did he did one of those. He did it was it was winter time. I can't forget it, it was cold. We was outside. He did he did that classic. Why are you wearing my hat? And I was what? He just came out of nowhere and said, "What you doing with my hat on? Give me my hat!" And he ripped it off my head and he put it on his head and he started playing basketball like no big deal. And then I was just, what is happening? And so, and so because you know, they were two of my friends, even though they were talking about me. And so I just kept bugging him and bugging him and bugging him, giving him a hat back until he just gave it to me. But he didn't give it back to me. He threw it on the ground, said, here you go, I'm done with it. And then just, and just walked off. That was the last time he messed with me. But, his, but the, the original guy, he just kept picking on me every single day. And I, so the only thing that helped me get through, it, get me through it was, I kept telling myself, he never touched me. He never touched me. He never put a hand on me. If I, if I, I, I could get through the, the verbal stuff, it, it, it messed me up, but fine. He never touched me. But then one day, I was with my friends at my locker. They went off and left. And I said, I'll be right back. I'll be with you in a second. And I don't know if he was watching me. I don't know where he came from. I don't know what exactly happened. But I was, I was paying attention. And I bent over to, to pick up my book bag. And then he, he came up from behind me. Grabbed me by my hips and grinded on me real fast and said, "I bet you like that, you little faggot." And then it's it's, it's the thing though it startled me because he he just, he just jumped me and then I ran away because I was like shocked I, I couldn't like comprehend what was happening and I just wh like where did he come from why was there nobody around why nobody warm it was like it was like I don't understand and, and 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 I just freaked out and ran away. I told my friends about it but I tried to act like it was like it didn't bother me as much but. Something inside me snapped, and I was like, "That's it." I was this. I was. I was mad. I was furious. But again, I still didn't tell nobody. And I said, "I don't care if I get in trouble. I don't care how big he is. I don't care if the, if the teachers come and kick me out of school. I am not going to stop until I knock this guy's head off." I was pissed because until then he never touched me. But this time he touched me, but in a, in a sexual way too. It was abusive, and it's, and it's like all the torment, all the things I kept bottled up, all the things I, I was, it was just, it was, I was just done. And I said, I'm gonna knock him out when I see him. So the next day, I was, I came to school pissed off, and I sat in the front row of, of in, the, in the classroom, by the in front of the door, because I wanted him to. When he comes in to see me. I wanted him to see me. I wanted to, because I said, as soon as he says anything to me, I don't know, I don't care what it is, I don't care if it's high, I'm going to knock his head off. That's all I want to do. And I'm going to keep beating him until they pull me off. I'm not going to stop beating him until he's in the hospital. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure he never functions again. Because I don't care about anything anymore. 
this has to stop now. And so I sat in that front row and I was pissed and I was angry. And then it looked like he took forever to get there. And then he got in the classroom. And I, and I knew he saw me because he sat right next to me and he was about to start his, his classic speeches. And then I stood up and I raised my hand back and I was going to knock it. And I was going and I had at the tent, my intent was to kill him. And so, and then I went to him and then I, I started thinking about, do I want to kill somebody? And I said, I don't want to hurt anyone. And I started to feel bad that I wanted to hurt him, which is weird because he was the one torturing me and I felt guilty about hurting him. And I stopped myself and the, something weird happened. He ran away. This guy was towered over me. He was bigger than me. He would torture me for, like, for weeks. And I, and this time he ran from me and it kind of changed the dynamic a little bit in the classroom. The people started to see me more as the, as the, as the somebody who was tough instead of somebody who could pick on. And, and, and then the, it made him look a little different too. Cause he like, he ran, he, like, he's bigger than me and he ran away. And, but then, but I felt bad that I actually wanted to hurt him, which was weird. And then eventually I told my parents. My dad was a little upset about this, but I told my parents, and then we went to the school, and we told him that, and the next, and then after that, he never bothered me anymore. And then, and then after summer vacation, I came back, he wasn't there. And, uh, but like I said before, if you are in trouble, and you are going through something like this, please tell somebody. Do not keep it to yourself. I know it feels like you're by yourself, and it really does. It feels like nobody's there to help you, nobody's going to be there for you, but they will. Now, I want to say this was the last time somebody ever picked on me, but that's the story for an, another time. So, if you're ever watching this, I, th I thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate it. And like I always say, in my dreams and in real life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, people.